Hello and welcome to week 5. In this lecture we will explore the improve phase of the make process. We will explore how we can make specific changes to the process in order for it to achieve its full potential and desired level of performance. In the improve phase we will look at specific changes that can be made to the process in order for it to achieve its full potential and desired level of performance. Experimental design also known as the Dynam Experiments, or DOE, is the main statistical tool that we can apply in this phase. In experimental design, we can make systematic changes to the process variables with a view to understanding their influence on the process performance. The objectives of the improved phase is to develop a solution to the problem and then test that solution using confirmatory experiments. During this phase, the original solution may be refined, revised and improved several times as more information becomes available from our experiments. In the improve phase, we're going to apply creative thinking to resolving the root cause that we identified in the analyze phase. We will be making specific changes to the process in order to improve its performance, and then we will be developing solutions that will test that. So we're going to apply pilot tests. This may indicate that we need to refine our approach. And as we refine, our approach, we will be revising it and improving it. As part of the final part of this phase, we will analyze any risks involved in implementing the proposed solution. There are a number of tools in the improved phase of the make process. There are the statistical tools such as experimental design and there are also the qualitative tools such as pokey or, or error proofing. We are all familiar with experiments. We may have conducted these many times as part of our science subjects that we studied in secondary school. In an experiment we're conducting tests or possibly a series of tests. In a designed experiment on the other hand we're actually making deliberate changes to the process or deliberate changes to our test in order to identify what effect these changes have on the output. So in relation to our process we will be making systematic changes to the controllable factors with a view to understanding how they influence the output. There is some basic terminology that we need to understand first. A factor, this relates to the variable or an input to the experiment. For example, temperature could be a factor. Then the levels relate to the setting of that factor. So for example, we may set temperature at 100 degrees Celsius. Or alternatively, there might be two levels. We might set it to 100 degrees Celsius and 120 degrees Celsius. The response is the name that's given to the output or the outcome of our experiment. And then the treatment is the experimental, con experimental condition. So for example, the treatment could be operating temperature at 100 degrees and pressure at say 70 PSI. <music> Let's consider the process of making microwavable popcorn. There are two responses in this process. One is the number of unpopped corn, that are kernels, that remain at the end of the process. And the other is the actual taste associated with the popcorn. There are a number of factors or inputs to this process. One is the wattage or power. Another is the time, another is the type of popcorn that we use, and the cost of the popcorn. The responses are the number of unpopped popcorn and the taste. We would like to minimize the number of unpopped popcorn while maximizing the taste. In terms of the wattage or power, there are two levels associated with this factor. We could set our microwave to 600 watts or 700 watts. We could set the time to 4 minutes or 3 minutes. type of popcorn is also a factor. This could be salted or buttered. The 
fourth factor relates to the cost. This could be an expensive brand of popcorn, or it could be a cheaper brand. Our aim is to maximize the taste at the same time as minimizing the number of popcorn that remain. We perform experiments in order to find out about the process. In relation to the process, there are a number of controllable factors, ones that we can actually control ourselves. There are other uncontrollable factors that we may have little or no influence on. And we have the output of our process, which is our response. We would like to set the controllable factors in such a way that they optimize the output or the response. Or this could be a number of responses. We would also like to set these controllable factors in such a way as to minimize any influence on our process of these uncontrollable factors. This is often performed when we conduct a robust design. In a robust design, we want to make our product or process insensitive to the uncontrollable factors. And we set the controllable factors in such a way as to minimize the influence of the uncontrollable factors on the response. Let's take the example of the tires on our car. The response is the braking distance, so that when we hit the brake pedal on our car, our car will come to a predictable stop. And that distance is predictable, irrespective of the conditions on the road. So for example, the uncontrollable factors when we're driving our car are the weather, the road surface, the driver ability, whether there's snow, whether there's ice, and so on. The controllable factors, on the other hand, are the rubber compound, the treading pattern, the tyre lugs and voids, and the rain grooves, and there are possibly other factors associated with the tyre as well. Now, in the, our domestic car, the braking distance is quite predictable. We generally don't tend to think too much about the actual road surface. So the controllable factors are designed in such a way as to minimize the influence of the uncontrollable factors. This is not the way the Formula One cars operate. In the Formula One cars, the, the tires are optimized for speed so that if there are certain weather conditions such as rain, we have wet tires. If there is dry, then there are dry tires. Even if it's slightly wet, and slightly dry, then we have intermediate tires. The objectives of an experimental design are to obtain as much information as possible about that process. We want to understand the influence that the factors have on that process. We would like to understand which of those influence the average response or the location of the response, which of those affect the variability of the response, and which have absolutely no effect. We can then identify the factors and their levels or settings which optimize the response and minimize the cost. After achieving this, we will build an empirical model of our process. Empirical model is a model that's developed from experimentation. This is a mathematical model which explains how that process operates. Here we see how factors affect the response. In the first case, we see that the factor affects the location of the response. So we see that the mean has shifted as that factor level changes. It is also possible that the factor may change the variability of the response. As we move from one level to another level, the mean doesn't change, but the variability of the response actually does. Other factors may influence both the location, the mean, and also the variability. In all our experiments, what we would like to do is minimize variability. There might also be some factors which have absolutely no influence on the response. And it's also worthwhile to know these factors because then it can actually result in reduced cost for operating that process. For example, if we go back to the popcorn example, if the cost of the popcorn had no influence on the taste or the number of unpopped corns, well then we could have opted for the cheaper brand. And yet we would have, had, we would have maximized the taste and at the same time minimized the number of unpopped corn. We will now introduce the concept of an interaction. An interaction exists when the combined influence of two or more factors is not additive. This means that the influence that a factor has on the response is dependent on the levels of one or other factors. 
Take, for example, grapefruit juice and drug interaction. The pharmaceutical companies will tell us that we are not supposed to take grapefruit juice when you're taking some specific drugs because it nullifies the influence of the drug and in some cases has an adverse effect. We also see the same thing in our everyday lives in relation to sugar and stirring, especially in relation to the sweetness of our coffee. Let's assume that the sweetness of our coffee is our response. We have two factors, sugar and stirring. We're going to evaluate this process at two levels. We have zero spoons of sugar and we have three spoons of sugar. We also stir for zero seconds and stir for five seconds. The sweetness of the tea will not be affected by putting in either zero or three spoons of sugar. Whether we put in three or zero spoons of sugar has little influence on the sweetness of our coffee. It's only when we stir our coffee does the fact that we have applied three spoons of sugar have any influence on the sweetness. This means that we have a sugar stirring interaction. This concludes part A of our Six Sigma, the Make Improve Phase.